What we're going to do in this lesson is use the replicate behavior to make a life meter for the submarine. Right now, as soon as the submarine hits the sea urchin, it dies. I want to give it three lives and indicate those three lives on screen with three little hearts up here. So the first thing we'll have to do is import an image for the heart. And those are in the crouton pack called Basic Items Croutons from Game Salad. If you haven't downloaded those already, go to gamesalad.com and get those. And it's the heart PNG right there. So I'm going to import that. I'm going to drag that up here to make an actor out of it. I'm going to drag a copy of this into scene one, the initial scene where all the game action is taking place. It's gigantic. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and resize it to a much smaller heart. And then drag it up here to the upper left hand corner. So now when I preview, we just have a heart sitting up there. It's not doing anything at the moment. It's not keeping track of anything. So what we want to keep track of is the lives attribute, which I'm going to make right now. One doesn't exist yet, so I went to attributes. And I'm going to create an attribute, an integer attribute, called lives. I'm going to set that to three. So the player can have three lives before it dies and goes to the game over screen. And what I want to do is show a heart for each life. So when you start, there'll be three hearts. And if you get hit, there'll be two. And then if you get hit again, there'll be one. And then if you get hit again, there'd be none and you would die. Now, the easiest way to do that is to use the replicate behavior. So I'm going to go into the heart. And then from behaviors, choose replicate. And I want to replicate. You can pick your direction, and this direction is set up just exactly like the direction for when you're moving something. Zero is to the right, 180 is to the left, and so on. So I want to go to the right. And you can set a specific number of copies, say five, which I don't want to do that. I want to use the attribute of lives that we just set up. So through the expression editor, I'm going to choose Game Lives. And then I'll leave the spacing at 50. I don't know how that's going to work out. Let's see what happens with that. But now because Game Lives is equal to 3, we'll see three hearts up here. There they are. That spacing of 50 seems fine. It's the spacing between their center points. So if I did want to make those closer together for some reason, you could go into the heart and reduce the spacing, let's say, to 40. Now you can see they're much closer together. So now this heart display will change based on the value of my attribute lives. So to make something happen there, I'm going to go into the submarine and where I hit the urchin, instead of automatically destroying the submarine, let me delete that behavior. And I'm going to bring in a change attribute behavior, which we've already looked at. So now instead of destroying the submarine, I want to change its lives. So from the attribute browser, I'm going to say, change the value of game lives to game lives minus one. Now before I can preview this, I've already set the game lives to game lives minus one, but I want to delete this change scene behavior also. If I don't, whenever I hit the urchin, it'll immediately change scenes to the game over scene. So I'm going to take that out of there as well. Now when I preview this, and come up here and hit the sea urchin. Let all this stuff pass by. You'll see each time I hit it, a heart disappears. And of course I got down to zero hearts and the game didn't end. 
because I haven't set that up yet. Every single thing you want to happen in a game, nothing happens automatically. You have to set it up and make it happen. So even though in my head, now I should be dead, I haven't told the game how to deal with that yet. And then the next lesson, we'll set that up before we move on to other behaviors.